Hi, it's Ross from Rochefort Times, and I'm with half of the hot dam with Lizzie and Jill. How's it going? Hey, thank you. Uh, so the album's just came out. How does it actually feel to actually have it out there? Oh, it's a joy. It is joy. It's been, we've been pregnant with this for what? Two years? It's like the know. longest gestation period ever. Is yeah. gestation the right word? It is, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Baby elephant or something. Uh, how did people take to it then when they finally got to hear it in full? I mean, we were, yeah, we, we think it's gone down quite well. We've not really heard anything negative so far. Touch wood. Touch wood. Touch wood. Touch wood. Yeah, because we'll yeah. cry if we hear anything negative. Yeah, we're very sensitive. So we just block it out. But um, no, it's been amazing. We've hit the charts and yeah, we've reached new fans. We've got a mail. Amazing uh, reviews from magazines we haven't even heard of, and it's just it's been really good. So, fingers crossed, we can uh, keep the momentum going. I guess, yeah, yeah, really good. How would you actually describe the band sound though? Because it's so different from what's out there on the scene at the moment. Well, that's a good thing. <laughs> that is a very good thing. Um, I just say I don't like putting it in boxes. I would just say a, a rock, pop, punk crossover. Do you know band, when people? Band. Sorry, go. Sorry, no. When when people ask me, I just say it's it's everyone's guilty pleasure. That's what's that's the genre. It's everyone's guilty pleasure. Yeah, we we. Deliberately tried to mix it up a bit because we just didn't want to do. Well, I just didn't want to do another rock album. So you know, specifically rock. Um, sometimes you just get a bit bored. Sometimes you do. You got to like mix it up. Um, so we 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 weren't afraid of pop. We're getting a bit older now. We're not afraid of the p word. Um, I think just trying something new and just being cheesy. Do you you know just just doing it because. The songs that are played on the radio, the ones that you know all the words to, are always the cheese. It's always the cheese songs, and we just want to, I don't know, be that guilty pleasure, basically. Yeah, that's a good description, Lizzie. <laughs> uh, obviously, the album was recorded quite some time ago. Why did it take so long to actually get it out into the public? Is it just what like independent bands are up against these days, or was there anything else going on? Um, so I think, you know, we'd, we'd muscled on getting everything together. We, we'd set a date, we'd got the album recorded. Um, and when we were sort of fishing around for labels, um, there was a specific one that was like, we want to, we want to do this. We want to take this on, but you've got to wait till we get things in place. So it was, it was that basically, there was no... Yeah, we were told to wait and so that they could do a proper campaign, they could do a proper pre-launch campaign, we could get a team together, we could do it properly, rather than just shoving it out to nobody. And I'm glad we waited because it's it's done really well. So, <laughs> yeah, sometimes you just got to sit on it. So, yeah, sad but true. Good things anyone... come to those who wait. Yeah. Uh, anyone that's seen you know that it's all about like bright and loud colours. Obviously, there's unicorns on stage, etc. Has there been any ba any ideas uh, that the band has came up with and you've went, hang on, that's actually a step too far? Well, all of those seem to be the ones that do the best. <laughs> like, like the tie-dye T-shirts. Yeah. And the unicorns on stage. Um, all the All the ideas that we seem to think I just pushing it a little bit too far seems to be the ones that work the best. So I guess yeah. no. <laughs> yeah, um, even the merch song, I was a bit like, are people going to get there? Mm, let's just try it. And it, they loved it. So mm. I think the no no was the polyester suits because they were, they were too hot, mm. they were too warm. We couldn't breathe. We were melting under the stage lights. It was a I mean, we had them for a couple of months and it was like, nah, <laughs> too hot, too warm, too ridiculous. Too sweaty. Mm. Sweaty, yeah. 
that was a no-no. But I don't know. I think if we someone has a ridiculous idea. We do think, let's try it. Let's try it. Try everything. Why not? Um, if it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Um, yeah. <laughs> Sticky Clubs is the last track on the album and it's not quite as upbeat as the rest of the songs on the album. Why put it at the end of the album? I think it's got that... It's got the outro that just winds it down and it's got the sort of the soundscape noises at the end, which really just, I think, just beautifully tails it off into the abyss which i think is a nice wind down for people who have just been like slamming sugar for the past you know 40 minutes i think it's a nice ah oh, okay mm. get back to your regular life <laughs> it's a little bit of a come down i think but mm. a nice slow release yeah i don't know i think it was just it just felt like a like a closer to me um mm -hmm. i think everyone agreed yeah it's pretty epic as well it's like i think it's like our answer to november rain yeah ballad think bang and ballad big mm -hmm. bang and ballad big ass solo twice because why would that you have mean... it once let's double that that's double that bad boy mm. Does that mean then, like, because it's your November rain, you're going to do, like, some extravagant over-the-top video to go along with it? Well, we'll try, but we'll probably either be rained off and end up in a caravan again, or, I don't know. We 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 had this grand idea for Live, Laugh, Love that was, in my head, something similar to November rain, like, on the beach, on the cliffs, or, or whatever. It was, like, going to be, like, epic as fuck. And then it rained. <laughs> We were like, oh shit, we're in a caravan then. <laughs> and it was great. We just, and then, you know, every time we try and do something serious, we get thwarted and it ends up being really silly. <laughs> so why fight it? Um, embrace the silliness. I think, you know, it's, I think we decided quite early on that we were just not the girls who take ourselves seriously <laughs> and we don't want to we're not the sexy cat suit band we're the we're the band that you know we just want to make party party fun time music and make you dance and make you laugh and sing songs about our souls and and having a banging night out and having a raging hangover that's the band we are and it's legit <laughs> yeah Obviously, the band comes together from bits of the Amorettes and Tequila Mockingbird and those two bands, they like kind of pushed on for a bit to just fulfil all the live dates that had been booked. At what point did doing both of those kind of obligations, for lack of a better word, did you all go, hang on, we're on to something here? Um, I think we knew pretty, pretty early on that... Um, you know, we we liked each other. Uh, we could all play, and we were all coming up with good ideas, and we were all working together really well. And no one was a dick. Um, well, that's a lie. <laughs> it's really hard to, you know, sometimes get on with everybody. But um, no, we we just we decided um, we we knew that it was coming to an end. Uh, the the year of commitments, and we just sort of thought we ended up doing. It was one year we did an Amaret show as the Amarets, but also Tequila Mockingbird was supporting. So we were we were both doing both gigs at the same time. So we, we would do Tequila Mockingbird show, then we'd go off stage, get changed, come on as the Amarets. And it got to the point it was just like this is nah, this this just be confusing. What band are we in? What song are we playing? What ah mm. um, and we just thought we need to get um we knew we wanted to start again because I think it was just an era change. End of an era, something new. Let's just let's just start again. Let's just um yeah, slate clean. What do we want to do? What do we want to do together? Not what do we want to do with the legacy of one someone else? We wanna we wanna start fresh. Um and yeah, 
that's kind of where it where it started. End of 2021, I think. I think, yeah. November 2021 was the last Amaretz gig. Uh, so when did you actually start writing material for the hot dam? Did you just kind of put that to one side until you got through all those um commitments or was there any like kind of jamming before that? Uh, oh no, I, I tell a lie, it was 19, 2019. I was gonna say it wasn't it, was it wasn't COVID. 21. Yeah, it was before COVID because we started the new band in COVID. Yeah. The lockdown happened. Um yeah, that's when we started writing. It was it was through it was me, Josie and Laurie. We didn't have we hadn't met Lizzie yet. Um or had we? I can't even remember. It's been that long ago. Um, I can't remember. I can't remember either. Yeah, time's oh. a bit of a flat circle. <laughs> like I you said Amaret's finished in 2021 and I could have totally believed that. Oh, uh, it didn't. I lied. I lied. 2019 2019 yeah that was the last show because yeah um i think we had met you lizzie and we were talking about doing something else um and then we'd we just we couldn't do anything so we just started writing during covid um just songs um but we couldn't meet up for about god what six months or something yeah, I don't know. Something like that, yeah. It was, it was really difficult. I was I was living in Scotland at the time, so I was flying down. I think when the world had opened and you could be together six paces apart, but you had to there could only be three people in the room, four people in the room, or whatever. It was so it was it was weird. I remember it was being very weird. Yeah. Um, and we'd we'd written a couple of songs, um, and we did a little COVID showcase that 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 Christmas time for our our first ever. Holiday Hogmanay Hangover. I think that was, was that COVID or was that 2020? Yeah, I think that was, was that not Christmas 2020? I think so. Mm. Yeah, because we had our first tour 2021 with the, with the Dust Coda. Ah, uh, yeah. Oh, was, yeah, that was, yeah, that's right. Right, we've got our dates now. <laughs> yeah, you'll, you'll need to recruit a hot damn historian to get all this in line for you. It's got a ring to it, that. Yeah. yeah. We need a Wikipedia page. Yeah, we do. Yeah, but anyone can edit that and say that, you know, you guys formed in like 2021 when it was actually 2019 or whatever it was. <laughs> as long as they make the stuff on our Wikipedia page as ridiculous as possible, I'm in. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so what did the fans of like Amaretz and Tequila Malkinburg think of the band as you started releasing all the singles? I mean, the hardcore fans hung about stuck around um it was it was different because it was we weren't i wasn't writing amaret songs it was it was something completely different completely new so there was always that thing in the back of my mind are they gonna like it are they not and at the end of the day you can't really worry about that you mm -hmm. just have to write for you and um go with it um some of them stayed around some of them we never heard from again but i don't know I don't know they're lost. So. <laughs> That's all good. We got the legends. The legends stay on. Yeah, that's what we're putting at. Uh, what's it like to tour with Hasey Dixie? Oh my God, that was so fun. It was so fun. They're such nice guys. And they're incredible musicians as well. So mm. there's always something to learn from every night. They taught us how to play bluegrass instruments as well. They were like our tour dads. It was so nice. It was just lovely, lovely people. And and <laughs> and Laurie weirdly keeps bumping into uh, Hippie Joe quite a lot, just generally in life. <laughs> so yeah, no, it was brilliant. It was it was a brilliant time. And I think I remember was it Jake that was saying that you know, oh you know all bands nowadays just they don't have you know it's all straight. straight 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 they don't have any sort of any swing to them or anything and then we came out with jukebox on the radio and he was like ah yeah there we go <laughs> so yeah it was good really really good tour great venues as well that i think that was like the biggest venues we'd played at that point wasn't it as the band mm -hmm. yeah yeah really good um 
I just, they were just so sweet. I remember there was one time we arrived um, just, just before sound check and they were sound checking. We were just putting our stuff in really slowly, but it was just really warm. Um, and we, so we just started taking our jackets off and taking our jumpers off because it was like, you start to sweat when you're lifting heavy shit. And they, they just started playing, um, what was that Phil Monty song? The stripper song. Oh! <laughs> Totally, you came out with it like absolutely yeah. no. Uh, incredible, like, oh, like the repertoire, incredible. Mm. Yeah, because yeah, really I remember Josie sending me the the news about the tour. I was like, that's a weird combination. And after I thought about it for about five seconds, like that makes a lot of sense actually, because it's just two bands that want to give people a good time. Yeah, yeah, I mean that was my view on it as well. I was a bit like a bluegrass band and a rock band, really. But again, when we did the tour, we were like, "Ah, oh, yeah, okay, mm -hmm. yeah, this makes sense." Yeah, because like I'll, I'll go see them anytime they're coming through, sort of thing. So you know, getting to see both bands together was brilliant. Anyway, uh, between obviously that tour, Black Spiders and Fozzy, like all those bands are just out to have a good time, make people have a good time, like. Do you approach those kind of tours differently? Because obviously Black Spiders and Fozzy, they are quite heavy and it's like, you know, spit and sweat and like hairy hard rock sort of thing. Do you go about it any differently? No. You always think, oh, we better we better play, you know, the the heavier songs for this specific audience, or we better we better do this, we better think about this. But we we don't, <laughs> you know, you, you do, it does cross your mind, but I think we just, we just are, are, are us. We don't really pander or cater to them because you can't, you can't just, you know, you're not always going to be, we only have kind of two heavy songs in the set. We don't, it's a mixture of, you know, we may mix it up some nights, but yeah, I think you just, you just have to be you. People have to like you for you. You can't um, sort of pretend to be like someone else. But we're obviously incredibly different anyway. So, you know, there's no pulling any wool over anyone's eyes. Mm. There's no hiding. Um, you just got to put your best foot forward all the time and be better than your last show. So, and I think we, we you know, we do. We try. We we work on it. We we do new stuff. We try new stuff. Um, yeah, just got to keep keep bashing at it and who else would you like to tour with Stella um, Black <laughs> she's a queen yeah. god bless her yeah. um, Abba know. Abba anybody god I think we could we could kind of cross over quite a lot Spice mm -hmm. Girls Punk audience, we've got a pop audience, we got a rock audience, we've got a metal audience. I think we're kind of lucky in that respect. We could we could slot in, you know, a lot of different a lot of different um sets. But, hmm, I don't know when we were talking about feeder on the uh on the bus last time. Uh last week. That would be that would be a cool a cool show. Uh just I don't know. Some nineties bangers, some some eighties bangers, some Ash, we were saying as well. That'd be cool. Ash. Ash? Oh yeah, totally. I need to uh I need to phone time. I'll do it now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Ash's also been out to uh <clears throat> Europe. Uh what's the difference between playing Europe and the UK? Well they they give you some level of hospitality, which is nice. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I think touring at our level, it's no secret that sometimes we end up changing in a toilet and literally a toilet. And other times we end up in a in a ballroom in Portsmouth. Um, so I think certainly for me, um, touring in, in Europe has always been about the. The fact that they just they, they care, they look after you a lot better. There's, you know, that that gig in in Cine Rocks we did, you know, there was a full like catering, 
uh, catering place with hot food that was just like constantly going throughout the day. There was, you know, like a cheese and meat platter in our dressing room. Um, it, they just, I think they just, the level of hospitality is much better in, in Europe. And also I think certainly in Germany, they just, they just love rock music, you know? They love rock, they love metal. They're always up for it. They're not quite as I think reserved perhaps as a, as a British crowd can be sometimes. Um, yeah, that would be my yeah. take home. I agree. Um, I've done Europe quite a lot in the past and, and yeah, it's it's up there. Not just the festivals, but but the gigs as well. You they go to town on your rider. It's really, you know, get you gifts and everything like that. It's it's really quite sweet. Um mm. and yeah. Um apart from I don't know, apart from that, I think the fans are the same though. They're just keen and lovely and um yeah, mental. <laughs> it's all good does the band have any pre-show rituals hmm. our playlist we do have a bit of a, a banging playlist on the go we have a little wonder boom that we take and we we listen to some 90s dance <laughs> um maybe have a beer and just get psyched up i think um yeah, um, nothing's too fancy. Just, just get a bit of makeup on and uh, get in the vibe. Get in the vibe. Get in the get in the zone. Really, yeah. Uh, we need to work on that. We sound a bit boring, don't we? God. Ugh. Well, I think we. I don't know. I think we're always just loud. We're always, you know, just laughing and joking. I think we just laugh and. There isn't any pre-show ritual, I don't think, some like per se, because I think, you know, we're just we're always on that sort of level. We're just always sort of like egging each other on and being silly with each other. And I think, you know, it's not really something that we do specifically before stage. It's just something we just generally do, you know. It's a great it's just a great dynamic between the four of us. Finally, what is the band got planned for the rest of the year in 2025? 2025. Oh my god, I don't know. I don't really, we, we don't really think that far ahead. <laughs> um, we're actually having a meeting tomorrow to discuss that, so probably bad timing. But, um, I know we've got a lot of um UK festivals that we're being pitched for, we've got already, we've got a lot of um German ones that are being pitched for as well. So, we'll we'll probably find out tomorrow, um, what we what we've got, what we can do, um. That would yeah that would be a, we'll get we'll be able to have a better idea uh then but it's it's going quite quite exciting quite exciting yeah exciting because our um our headline our album headline tour in November which I'm really looking forward to that's going to be super cool oh yeah uh, the DAD tour um that's coming up we've got. Another German yeah. show with New Roses. Um, and then we've got the Fozzy Cruise in January. So that'll be anything after that, though. Well, I, so I don't know. <laughs> the Fozzy Cruise. Stretch that far, yeah. The Fozzy Cruise, a.k.a. our little holiday. <laughs> that's that's something to look forward to. Miami to the Dominican Republic. I don't think I've been as far away from home. Well, no, that's a lie. But... So like yeah. bikinis in January. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, start buddy. To, start going to the gym. Yeah. Yeah, buddy. Mm-hmm. And Saturday as well, you've got uh, these wicked drivers at KK's. Yes. Oh, yeah, of course we do. Yeah. Of course we do. I nearly forgot. <laughs> do. It's because we're only on Tuesday, that's why. Mm, yeah. yeah. Yeah, we've got the, the 10th birthday party who would have thought they were 10 they look they look much older than 10 don't they yeah but they're just 10 so we're gonna to have to go to toys r us and get them some presents <laughs> i was saying to josie we should have we should um 
we should dress up like lamps and like creep on stage and hide and then dance we should oh my god we should just know so we get in. <laughs> they'll either love it or they'll die <laughs> Well, I'm coming to that show, so if it doesn't happen, I'll be very disappointed. Oh, no. I've got to do it now. Yeah. Go spot secret if we, if we find four massive lampshades uh, by Friday. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, I think we'll leave it there then. I can't wait to see you on Saturday. I, my mind just went blank there. Looking forward to it. And hopefully we'll get to catch up in person again. Perfect. Thanks so much, Ross. No Thank problem. You. Cheers. See you soon. Bye. Bye. Yeah. Bye.